Good morning, good morning, my creative friends, and welcome back to Making Monday Mornings Sacred <clears throat> with Oracle Cards and Zen Tangle and some mindful creativity. I enjoyed a lovely week off last week, and I'm happy to be back here with all of you this Monday morning. It's like 19 degrees outside, and it's snowing. And it looks like a winter wonderland, and it feels like a good morning to just simply slow down and connect and catch our breath before we step into a very busy week. So I have my candle here. It's also a beautiful full moon this morning. And uh, I pulled out this morning a brand new Oracle deck that I got. And I thought I'd pull an or Oracle card for us this morning to get us started going. And welcome if you're joining me live. As always, thanks for being here. Happy to be back with you guys after a week off and I'm moving a little slowly this morning feeling kind of quiet maybe some of that nice full moon energy and the beautiful snow outside good morning Carol and Cindy it is a, a gorgeous deck I've only used it once so I'm still getting to to know this one but it was one of the good morning Jackie things that I treated myself to when we took some time away to go play in Boulder. And I'm simply asking uh, for a message for all of us today, what's needed in the highest and best good of all this morning. Well, that is not a happy card. Interesting. It says repression. Hmm. And I'm wondering if that is, let's see, I'm trying to remember. So this deck is really interesting in how it is all set up. This is all about claiming our own fierce nature that empowers our capacity to endure against all odds by expressing intense focus or a response that doesn't back down when confronted. So this is all about having a healthy expression of our anger and not living in fear, but standing up for ourselves. So a message perhaps that we all need and, it, and it's all about acknowledging all the different aspects of ourselves, the aspects that we perceive to be good, the aspects that we perceive to be not so great. Challenging, definitely a, a challenging card this morning. It feels like a, a wicked witch hidden in the rock there. But again, representing that aspect of ourselves that maybe we've been taught that it wasn't okay. I don't know about you, but as a young girl it was definitely the message that I got was that it was okay to cry but it wasn't okay to express anger and so this card isn't about repression it's about the opposite of that about really uh, the only way forward to being full and whole is to accept and honor all aspects of ourself including our fierceness our fierce focus our fierce resilience um, Interesting, interesting message for this full moon morning. All right, so in our Sacred Circles membership, I have been playing with alcohol, or sorry, acrylic inks on vellum. And you can see this one's super, super shiny. And then I want to practice doing some Zentangle over the top of these, this is what we're going to be doing in class this week. So I thought I'd do some double duty this morning and 
maybe practice tingling over the top of one of these. And as I enter into the week ahead, I'm being very mindful of a full to-do list, but also a spaciousness in my calendar that I'm grateful for, not too many appointments. Yeah, Carol, right? And then we repress that part of ourselves that wasn't allowed ever to express strong emotions. Couldn't get angry, couldn't talk back. For sure. I remember one time uh, I did something and my stepdad was mad at me and I, teenager, you know, went in my bedroom and slammed my door and he was always really good about consequences that match the crime. So he made me stand there and open and shut my door quietly a hundred times. I think I was laughing by the end of it, but it was another example of where it wasn't okay to release those feelings and release that anger, especially not at anybody. I'm trying to decide which one. I think I'm going to start on this one because I got to figure out what I'm doing for class this week and I'm going to work with a micron PN. I really like the the PN. It has a plastic nib instead of a fiber nib and sometimes those nice fiber nibs don't love going over acrylic paints. This is one of my son Connor's beautiful designs from this month and uh Interesting that repression was the card and the affirmation for today is I feel peaceful, grounded, and secure. And when I do feel peaceful, grounded, and secure, it means I'm comfortable expressing my emotions. I'm not holding on to my emotions. And I was thinking about these different designs and how much I love to paint over them and what would help me to feel peaceful and grounded. And a lot of it's about creating safe containers for ourselves. And one way to start that is to think about each section of this design. And each section of the mandala and the sacred circle design as a whole, it's a sacred container. It's one of the things I love about the meaning and symbolism of a traditional mandala or sacred circle design as we call them, is that it represents the whole and all of the individual parts. And so often when I hear that, you know, people are really longing to be authentic and we want to be around other people who are authentic, it really is about that full expression of ourselves. As human beings, we are like these sacred circles. There's the whole that people see, the public face that we present, and then there's also all of those individual parts, all of the stories that we tell ourselves, all of the beliefs that we hold, the core values that we hold. Yes, uh, Carol, I find the same thing that um, the O1 especially is really fragile and it doesn't love all surfaces. It actually likes a really more of a smooth surface, a very smooth watercolor or smooth bristol. And there's something about simply outlining all of these individual patterns, just taking my time to slowly go over all of the lines. 
It's very grounding and it's very calming. It doesn't require any thought on my part. It does require focus. It requires me to slow down and be here in the now, really looking at the design in front of me. And in a sense, I'm bringing that design back to life after having covered over it with paint. And I loved the experimentation of printing this on vellum. And it's actually pretty on both sides. Would be beautiful with this transparency and some matte medium adhered to a journal page. And I find that sometimes the best use of our art is for expressing the fullness of our emotions, our rage, our sorrow, our joy, our curiosity. Our selfishness, our neediness. All of our emotions have value. And the more we learn to honor and accept all of our feelings, the less that we hold on to them. And the more we're able to release them and not create stories around them. And I think, uh, I believe pretty strongly we do a disservice to our children by not teaching them how to effectively manage their emotions from a young age by just simply giving them permission to express them and feel them in healthy ways. This particular design, all of the designs are created by my son, Connor Dobson, for our Sacred Circles membership. And this one somehow reminds me of like circus imagery, something about the circles and the, the balls and the stars feels festive and playful. Feels like it's brightening up my spirits a bit. Not that my spirits were dim, but that's the cool thing is like you can feel good and then you can just feel even better. Even better. I have a lot to do today, but I also have a lovely spacious day of no appointments to get a lot of things moving, had a lovely weekend of friends and creativity. A girlfriend and I had a bookmaking party on Saturday at her house. We went to Rocky Mountain National Park on Friday and went for a beautiful walk and out to lunch with friends. Yesterday in the morning before the snow came, we went for a a fun bird walk. So I don't know if I've sure I surely I've mentioned on here that uh, I married into a family of bird watchers and since we moved here Brad's been really into bird watching and it's duck migration season here right now and so we went to a wonderful local nature preserve and saw all kinds of beautiful ducks in full plumage doing their mating dances and 
We saw a pair of bald eagles chasing each other and doing full barrel rolls in the air. It was, uh, it was just magical, a magical day, a magical weekend. And I'm excited because our new collaboration class with two of my dear friends, Mary Rose and Sheila, our Carousel of Creativity class is opening today or open this morning. And it's going to be so much fun. So it feels like there's been a lot of uh, walking down memory lane quite a bit. If you've seen any of my posts or emails, my grandfather invented a portable merry-go-round. <coughs> Most of the time, carousels were stationary and they were huge and uh, they didn't move. And uh, he invented a whole series of kiddie rides. And then my father took over that company and my one of my earliest summer jobs was painting merry-go-round horses. And so our theme is carousels and we have some beautiful projects. The, the merry-go-round horse was just mine. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. And... Uh, it was pretty fun growing up around all those rides and being at my dad's shop was always a treat for my brother and I getting to try out new rides. And of course, it was a, a machine and welding shop, so there was always something cool and interesting going on. And then at one point, my dad had a um, traveling carnival that he took around to church fairs and festivals. And then he owned an amusement park for a while. So I spent an, a lot of time on carnivals when I was a kid. So I'm going to just start adding some mindful pattern here to this. How's everyone doing this morning? How are you feeling? It uh, full moon energy. That one is dead. All right, we're going to stick with the PN. Can sometimes be intense. Maybe that's why we drew the that card this morning that maybe you're feeling a little stirred up this morning and not even sure why. So we definitely can be very attuned to the cycles of the moon, whether we know it or not. And I loved just adding the lines on this and bringing this design back to life. It was kind of like, oh, there it is. There's clarity again. And one of the things that helps me feel peaceful, grounded, and secure is to have clarity about different areas of my life and what I'm doing and what I want. And when I'm not clear, I feel anxious. I feel unmoored. I don't feel grounded. I feel floaty. And today I am feeling pretty peaceful, grounded, and secure. Life is good and I'm grateful for that. Oh, Bonnie man, I am so sorry you're still feeling bad. But I'm glad you're getting better and better each day. Thank you for being here, my friend. Oh, I love that carol. A nice long pause with your art group that you host. That's beautiful. And remind me, I think you said you guys have been meeting together for a while, right? For a few years. Is that correct? What I remember. And so again, we often think that when we're approaching 
coloring or mindful creativity that it needs to be complex lots of pattern and design but for me peacefulness is really about spaciousness and when I draw that spaciousness and allow for spaciousness on the page it mirrors that spaciousness in me as well so don't always feel like every design that you sit down to work on has to be complex especially those of uh, those of us that really love mixed media art can get really pulled in by the layers and the complexity and sometimes it's the simplicity that serves us the best when it comes to dealing with emotions simplicity of I feel angry, I feel sad, I feel alive, I feel peaceful. Naming our feelings allows us to just release them and not get caught up and overwhelmed by them. It's when we hold on to them and we don't release them that we start to make up stories. And those stories can oftentimes stay with us for years and hold us back. That's why I created one of my favorite mini courses that I have is called Color Coded Emotions and it's all about using color and sacred circles and understanding the difference between feelings and emotions. Six years, that's amazing Carol, I love it. Oh Lisa, the stomach bug is the worst. I would take a, a head cold over a stomach bug anytime. When we got so sick in January, it was all of it. And just remembering to pause and to breathe. To allow the page in front of you, if you're coloring or doodling or painting along with me here, let the page be the holder, the receptacle of all those emotions. So I know I'm wanting to create some spaciousness and I'm feeling like there's a little busyness happening here and a lot to happen, a lot to get done, but it's all really good fun stuff. Yeah, and I would say that that health includes mental health, spiritual health, physical and emotional health. So I'm going to put one of my favorite Zentangle patterns in here, which is a Zentangle pattern called Droop. So I'm creating like a pie with six pieces of pie adding some aura lines to those initial lines I definitely am a fan of more organic rather than grid style patterns and I like the grid ones that end up being also a little botanical in nature and this one always kind of feels that way it's a little graphic and a little botanical as well yeah Lisa I think that's you know one of the the biggest lessons I've personally learned in the last however many years that I've been doing this type of art as creative process, what I call my mapping, my morning art activation, is learning to 
get those feelings up and out of my body and onto the page. The happy ones, the sad ones, the mad ones. Because when we get them up and out, we can see them, we can name them. And our bodies are so much healthier when we learn to let go of emotions, to just fully feel them and express them. Sometimes it only takes seconds, 90 seconds, to let ourselves feel mad or sad, angry, disappointed, whatever it is, and just if we give ourselves permission to really feel the feeling rather than repressing it or holding on to it like our card for the day, it passes. And then we get back to that peaceful, grounded and secure place. And it's not about releasing it at other people. It's about getting it up and out of ourselves. And for me, art is one of those really safe plays to do, places to do that because it's coming out of me onto the page and that page can be thrown away, it could be burned, shredded. Shredding paper feels really good. So this is a Zentangle pattern called Shattuck, one of my favorites. What I love about adding Zentangle patterns to these larger designs that Connor creates is it often takes days to complete and there's something about giving myself permission to just be here now in the moment, not needing to finish anything. But just being able to be here for, you know, this 20-ish, 25 minutes and just linger here on the page. I feel better. I feel quieter. I feel ready to go and face the day. I'm very grateful I don't have to go anywhere outside the house today because... It truly is a icy, frozen wonderland. It looks very pretty, but I can't imagine that the roads are very nice this morning. So I also feel peaceful, grounded, and secure here in my home. And I'm starting to have a beginning of the, the pattern for what I'm going to want this to look like. I'm going to create something symmetrical. I think that's the other aspect of these sacred circle designs and why psychology shows that they've been proven to create more relaxation and mindfulness than any other type of coloring or creative expression because our minds love the symmetry. They love the repetition. They love the parts and the whole. This is such just a really beautiful mirror for who we are. There's a lot going on under the surface, but the whole is cohesive and congruent. And it's going to be pretty when it's done. And it may take me a few weeks to work on it. And that's okay. I'm going to get a lot of joy and satisfaction out of finishing that one. 
So that's my little bit of art and a little bit of Zen Tangle, a little bit of color, a little bit of mindfulness, and a reminder that I can color in at any moment in time what it is that I want more of. And I can color out the things that need to get up and out and onto the page so that I can come back to this place of feeling peaceful, grounded, and secure. That's it for today. I'm glad to be back with you guys. I missed you all last week. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Have a beautiful rest of your day, my friends. Thank you.